Okay, YouTube. Uh, you can call this uh, video uh, either a standalone uh, video on uh, the premium uh, Japanese cruiser, tier 8 cruiser, or the Otago. Uh, just some uh, cruiser gameplay. Or we can call this part 2 of uh, Oberst Rant on uh, World of Warships and the current uh, changes that are taking place in the game. All right. With this video here, uh, I wanted to display uh, this replay that I had with the Otago. Uh, not my best game in uh, this ship. I did, uh, in fact, I would not recommend uh, my decisions on what I did in this game as uh, a way you should be playing the Otago in terms of my decision to go off on my own. Normally uh, with this ship or just about with any cruiser I would usually decide to hang out with uh, a couple of battleships see where the battleships were going and I'd go hang out with them in the beginning adding my firepower to uh, to theirs, uh, shooting at their targets, and um, you know, watching for destroyers and things like that, waiting for the end game to really start getting aggressive, uh, where I could use my torpedoes and things like that, and, and um, you know, take out, uh, use my firepower to take out damaged ships. Usually I play much much more conservatively when I play my my cruisers, but um, I don't know what what I was thinking. I just decided I was going to go to uh, the number four uh, cap point and uh, see what was going on there. Maybe uh, come across uh, some cruisers. Now initially. I thought that this destroyer right here was going to go to four, but instead he up and decided to swing around to uh, the center cap. And, excuse me. <coughs> oh, sinuses are just going nuts with the weather change. <coughs> but. Anyway, uh, he, he decided to go to the center, and I was already kind of committed to this, so I figured I would go check out what was going on at the, um, at the number four cap, uh, cap point, cap area. Now, I could see that I had a battleship coming my way, and I had two other cruisers that were also on their way to support me, so I figured I was in a pretty good position that I would get back up if I needed it. On top of that, I'm using the same captain that I had in uh, the previous video in, in my Kamikaze R. So my detectability range in the Otago is 9.1. So I figured that would, would help as well. Now right here, I know I've been spotted once, so I know that that the destroyers uh, that are over here, uh, they're going to uh, know where I am. Now here I was at my most vulnerable because I was coming out from between these two islands. Now I'm surprised that that Shimikaze didn't fire uh, torpedoes. Fire a spread of torpedoes. He would have gotten me there. So that was mistake number one. Uh, but either the guy is not loaded his torpedoes have not loaded in yet or uh, maybe he uh, has decided to hold on to them I don't know what the hell the guy is doing But now I'm still spotted. I've got a Baltimore firing at me. And his uh, division mate is in the Amagi. <laughs> the 
but the main reason I put this video up um, has nothing to do with you know the the choices that I made in this thing. Like I say, normally I would not go off on my own like this. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I guess I was just thinking about trying to be uh, to play this ship in a more aggressive manner. But the thing I want to point out here, the what the reason I, I chose this video to upload is if you remember, if you watched my previous video on uh, the Japanese destroyer line and my thoughts as to why uh, there's been the huge change in the Japanese destroyer line. <laughs> I want to, uh, this video, uh, will hopefully show battleship and cruiser players that uh, are having difficulty in playing their ships. What you should be doing when you're, when you're, um, in combat. Now, luckily for me here, again, I, I showed broadside to the Amagi and I lucked out, but I've taken damage. Fortunately, the Otago uh, has a repair, the uh, repair skill, the repair ability. So, um, I can repair some of my damage that I've taken. Uh, so the Otago, as a premium ship, one of the great things is it is a, a, an even more forgiving cruiser than a lot of uh, other boats. <laughs> but what I want to show here is how you should be playing your battleships, how you should be playing your, your cruisers. When you are spotted, you know you've been spotted, and... Uh, you want to dodge incoming enemy incoming fire from their guns you also I already know there's at least one destroyer out here uh, the uh, Fletcher is still hanging around out here flinging torpedoes so you'll notice I don't stay on one course heading for very long I'm constantly adjusting my course Actually, I did not adjust my speed. Um, here I'm using these two islands to effect. I could fire at the Baltimore, but the Baltimore couldn't see me. With this island here, I could fire at the Baltimore, and the Amagi does not see me. So here my fire finishes off the Baltimore. Now here's the Fletcher. I can see the Fletcher. So I know the Fletcher is on the other side of this island. So I know I've got to worry about him. So I decide to send some torpedoes his way just in case he's going to try and pop from that island to uh, nail me with to nail me with his torpedoes. Uh, <laughs> my mic cut out. Uh, so anyway, uh, <laughs> here's the thing. My, my main purpose with this video is to try and show, you know, some of you guys that, you know, you drive in straight lines too much. You show your broadside to the enemy too much. You know, those of you who are running cruisers and those of you who are running battleships. And, uh... I'm hoping that this video will teach you uh, how to use what is absolutely the best hack in the game. And it's a hack that uh, you won't be banned for using. Wargaming won't ban you for using it. And the hack is learning to use your W, A, S, and D keys. Learning to maneuver your ship. As you can see, I'm constantly changing my heading. I know I've got a destroyer ahead of me. In fact, I'm also watching the map. And, uh, because I'm actually concerned there may be more than one destroyer coming for me. And I soon find out that both of the other... See, one has just popped up. One of the enemy destroyers just popped up. And they're down in the uh, lower... Uh, left-hand corner of the map over at the uh, number I believe it's the number one cap area both of their destroyers are down there so I I see that 
and that makes things a lot easier for me. I know I only have one enemy destroyer to worry about. But you can see the whole time, I'm, I'm constantly changing course and speed. I might hang there on a certain course for, you know, 30 seconds, and as I did there, you can see the destroyer captain fired a spread of torpedoes, hoping I was going to hold that course. You can see his second set of his second spread of torpedoes was a was a uh, more tightly packed spread, not as spread out. He was hoping I was going to continue on the course I was on, and if I had done that, I would have most probably been hit by the torpedoes. But because I changed course, I saw his first spread, which he made a wide spread of torpedoes. So by him doing that, that was easy for me to avoid and his second spread was nowhere close to me and uh, so he's gone off to help the uh, battleship uh, the Amagi by putting him in smoke now I've got a, a Bismarck coming for me you can see him just off to the uh, right hand side of the screen and you can see him on the map fortunately his guns are trained at uh, the friendly ships that are trying to take uh, the cap that they have uh, at the center of the map. So he's focusing in on them to try and deny us that cap. Uh, you will soon see that he'll eventually give up on that looking at the points. Once the uh, game turns around, as you can see, we're losing right now but the game's going to be turning around here in a minute and when it does uh, you'll see that he'll give up on that and he starts to, he'll start to uh, target me but by this time it's a little too late so right now I'm trying to keep my guns on the Fletcher he's the target that I really want to hit and again you can see here by my turning, he aimed his torpedoes hoping I was going to stay on that one course. But I'd already turned to, to starboard, to my right. And, uh, and so I was able to easily avoid all those torps that he had fired. But now I'm starting to turn towards this Bismarck. Now I can see the uh, Amagi, even though he's in smoke. I'm close enough that I can see him. Boom. I use my torpedoes to uh, deal with him while still keeping my guns facing forward towards the uh, Fletcher and the Bismarck but here I, it, as you can see the game has turned around dramatically okay guys well I'm trying to keep this as short as possible so <laughs> my hope here is that um, I want to help those of you that are having trouble with the game uh, in your battleships and your cruisers and uh, in dealing with um, the things that you find difficult like cruiser players having trouble you know dealing with uh, battleships hitting them don't show a battleship a broadside is do as the constant the the WASD keys are your friend so long as you keep adjusting course and speed, you can avoid a lot of the battleship shells. Um, you can avoid torpedoes, and that goes for battleship players. The WASD keys are your friend. Use them. They will make a difference in your gameplay. Uh, I, I really hope that, uh, that this video is informative for you and that it will help you... Um, in your uh, gameplay here on World of Warships. If, if I've helped anybody, uh, even just a couple of you, then I feel uh, what I've done here is worthwhile. I know you guys have to put up with my boring voice. <laughs> for those of you that I haven't put to sleep, you know, okay, uh, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. Again, as always, hope to see you out there on the sea. And... Uh, if I don't see you in battle and uh, you're in a game there, uh, think of me and uh, sink a few for me, will you please? Take care, guys. Uh, enjoy the rest of this song.
trat ihren Namen in Erinnerung, mit er vor Stund Respekt. Sie gab ihr junges Leben für ihr Land, jämmerlich ersoffen und verdeckt. Jung und stolz auf ihren mächtigen Schiffen, so starben diese Matrosen auf einem Seemannsgrad. Und es tönen die Geschütze Feuer aus allen Rohren und die Wellen sie tosen auf einem Seemannsgrad. 